Hello and welcome everyone to IT Pro Guide and AWS Networking. We are watching the third video and that is about virtual private cloud. We can say virtual network or your network. Anyway, it's a foundation of Amazon Web Services networking. Let's start from the on-premises traditional data center. You have switches, routers and firewall. And until a firewall in your data center, you call it as your private network. And that is the end point of your private network. The Amazon Web Services Virtual Private Cloud, let's say AWS VPC, is similar to your traditional network in your data center. It is a logically separated piece of highly scalable AWS cloud network infrastructure. So it is a part of Amazon Web Services cloud network infrastructure but logically separated and that is dedicatedly for your account. So if you want to spin up a virtual machine in Amazon Web Services or you want to use Route 53 or you want to use Elastic Load Balancing, all these services use Virtual Private Cloud VPC. So a VPC is something that you have to plan first in AWS and VPC is where you can define your IP address ranges. So now let us connect a VPC and region and availability zone that we learned in the previous video. A VPC span across all of the availability zone in the region. So when you create a VPC in a region, for example US East, it will be available in all the availability zone in that region. So you don't need to create multiple network for your redundant instance runs in the other availability zones. If you want, you can create multiple VPC in the same region and you can add multiple subnet to one VPC. Even if you didn't create a VPC, a default VPC is ready for you to use. So you don't have to create and configure your own VPC unless you need it. You can immediately start launching Amazon EC2 instance to your default VPC. That is why when you create an instance, they don't ask you to create a, a VPC or security group or something. There is a default VPC. So when you create a new instance, that is going to be connected with the default VPC. And you can also use services such as uh, Elastic Load Balancer, Amazon RDS, Amazon EMR in your default VPC. Why I said this, there is no limitation that if you continue with default VPC, you can also modify the components of your default VPC as needed. One important point that you always need to keep in mind is all the resources connected in one VPC can talk each other regardless of which subnet they are. So you create a VPC and you have five subnets inside. All the resources connected to this VPC can talk each other by default. You don't need to do any kind of configuration from your side, like a layer 3 switch. Whatever the VLANs you have in, in a layer 3 switch, which can talk each other if you have a route. So the same here, it, there is a default route, so you don't need to do anything. We will talk about this in detail in the following tutorial. So just keep in mind, inside the VPC, all the subnets can talk each other. So after this slide, I'm going to demonstrate you how to create a VPC. So when you create a VPC, you must specify a range of IP addresses for the VPC. Uh, in a cider block format that is for example 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So this is uh, you are going to say to the VPC that hey this is the block of addresses that I'm planning to use with this VPC. Then you create a subnet then you want to create a subnet. So once you create a VPC the next step is to create a subnet. When you create a subnet you specify a cider block for the subnet which is going to be a subset of VPC CIDR block. So here in this example, the CIDR block for VPC is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Then subnet can be 10.0.1.0 slash 24 like that. The allowed block size for VPC CIDR block is between 16 and 28. AWS reserve the first to four IP address and last address of each subnet block. Now look at the example, you have a CIDR block for VPC 10.0.0.0 slash 16 that is available across the region in all availability zone in that region. 
then you have different subnet for each availability zone you have instance at each availability zone and each instance start uh, with an IP address 10.0.0.5 so instance at availability zone starts with an IP address uh, 5 not less than 5 because the first 4 is reserved and the last IP address is also reserved so this is how it is you create a VPC and you specify a block size then you create subnet uh, which is a subset of that block size and then instance gets IP address from the subnet that you have given and it start with number 5 and for further reference you can choose the link below here so let us move to the demo session we are gonna see how default VPC is working and how to modify a default VPC then how to create a custom VPC then also instances with the VPC log into your EC2 AWS management console then make sure you have selected the right region then you can see the resource dashboard there is no configurations uh, we have done yet it's like a new account so first we're gonna see the default VPC for that let us create a new instance so when you create a new instance and there is no VPC configured yet then that is going to be connected with the default VPC so go to the configure instance details to see you can see network subnet and auto assign public IP from the network it is mentioned VPC default then there are subnets there are six subnets each subnet is for each availability zone so there are six availability zone in North Virginia location then there is uh, then there is auto assign public IP by default it is enabled so if you start an instance and connect it to a uh, default VPC then you get a auto assign public IP you connect it to default VPC and the sub one of the subnet let's cancel this wizard and go and have a look at the VPC for that uh, go to the services and from the network and content delivery choose VPC virtual private cloud now you get a dashboard related to VPC uh, subnets route table internet gateway everything you can really see uh, like a, a dashboard of the resource by region now click at the VPC then this is the default VPC when you expand the IPv4 CIDR block you can see that it is 172.31.0.0 slash 16 this is the CIDR block uh, by default um, AWS given to this VPC and there are six subnets each subnet belongs to one availability zone then there is a route table when you look at the route table you can see that by default i said all the devices connected in this vpc regardless of the subnet can talk each other because of this entry there is a route uh, created for all the subnets then there is a second entry which give internet to this vpc so these two are the related to the uh, internet and uh, the connectivity between the devices then this is the internet gateway that we found in the VPC then there is network ACL and security group this we will discuss in detail in the coming video we need to focus this very much this very important topic when it comes to networking of AWS now let us try to modify this default VPC for that you can click on the actions after selecting the VPC then go and edit CIDR block the first thing we're gonna do is to add additional CIDR block so uh, if you want to have a, some preferred CIDR block in the default VPC that can then you can add like this then you can create subnet which is a subset of this CIDR block and you can assign IP address from that subnet to your instance so I'm gonna cancel this so we will create a new VPC later then from the subnet also you can add additional subnet if you want to the default VPC uh, then so this VPC is customizable as per your requirement you can customize it when we explained about VPC in the beginning I said the VPC span across the region so when you look at the region it is North Virginia so this VPC is available for all the availability zones in North Virginia 
and you can see the subnets which I get by default there are six subnets and each subnet belongs to one availability zone because the scope of a subnet is just to one availability zone now let us create a new VPC for that uh, select your VPC then go to create VPC from here enter a custom name let us put custom VPC for an understanding then give a cider block I'm gonna give my favorite cider block there is 192.168.0.0 slash 16 then click to create it now a new VPC has created you can understand it by name custom VPC and you can see the cider block also let us go and create two subnet for this custom VPC for that click create subnet then enter a name which a meaningful name that for your understanding you can put like production network staging network uh, or you can put like a DMZ a web server zone database zone application zone something like uh, similar to your production and uh, namings would you uh, tear into application web server something like that then put IPv4 cider block address so this cider block address will define which IP address your devices uh, gonna get so create the other second subnet give a name then select VPC then select the availability zone because a subnet scope is availability zone then give a cider block so the instance get an IP address based upon the cider block that you given here then click to create now the second subnet has created let us change in case if you want to change the name you can change it from here you can see the edit icon so you can change it uh, here and also you can add name for the default subnets which uh, come up with a blank uh, tag that you can also change it now look at the route table of custom VPC that we have just created there is a difference you can see there is a root 192.168.0.0 which means all the subnet and all the resources connected to this VPC can communicate each other can talk each other there is nothing else to do to configure the route and when you click on the subnet you can see which are the subnet associated to this also so any resources connected to this subnet can communicate each other then when you look at the internet gateway there is no internet gateway to this uh, routes so which means that this VPC doesn't have internet connection let's go to ECT and create an instance on this VPC click on the running instance then click to launch an instance then select a Windows machine which is a free tier then click select then go to configure instance details then you can see from the network tab you have two VPC one is the default and the other one is custom let us select the custom one then you have options subnet we have two subnets one is availability zone 1 and the second one is availability zone 2 select one from it then you can see auto assign public IP is disabled so unless if it is a default VPC this is going to be disabled so you can select it from here you can enable it so that your instance will get a public IP and by this way you can connect it to your instance from outside for remote desktop for example this is not a requirement every time so if you don't need you can keep it disabled if you need it you can keep it enabled so things are fine now let's review and launch the instance click launch now you need to have a key pair if you are the first time it will ask for a create a key pair now I have an existing key pair so I'm gonna go with that then click to view launch instance now you can see the instance uh, is initializing once it completed click to connect and get the password then browse your private key then click to decrypt your password now you get your password to connect to the remote desktop now 
let us connect to this one for that download the remote desktop file then click ok then try to connect remote desktop to the instance that we have just created so the connection to this instance you can see it has failed let us see what is the reason so when I create a VPC, I told you that there is no default internet and there is no internet gateway connected. Let's go to the VPC and connect internet gateway to this VPC. As there is no internet gateway to this VPC, we cannot remote desktop to the instance that we have created. So go to the internet gateway, then click to create an internet gateway. Give a meaningful name here. Let's put custom VPC then click to create then close it now an internet gateway is ready but you can see it is detached so let us attach it to a vpc then click to attach then go to the route table and edit the route table by selecting the vpc then edit routes then add internet gateway here for that click and select the internet gateway that we have created then enter the destination address click to save the routes now the internet gateway has successfully created you can compare the routes of the custom VPC and the default VPC the cider block and also the internet gateway is available on both let's go back to the ec2 instance and try to connect our machine now you can see it prompt for the credentials enter the credentials that we have copied the username is administrator now you are connected to the instance through custom vpc so this is how to create a custom VPC, how to create subnets, then assign internet gateway, then launch an instance so that you can connect your instance through remote desktop. So that is all about VPC and custom VPC. Thank you for watching this video. In the coming video, we're going to talk about IP, internal IP and external IP and elastic ip so thank you for watching this video subscribe my youtube channel for more videos